you get squeezed, and then I think your body falls asleep, and then you die peacefully. <laughs> but, so I just was like, I'm doing it, and I just, um, it, it was actually at Parks and Rec I decided this. I left, like, the, one of the last days of our shoot, um, the last episode, I just, like, went from there to the audition, and I had a plan to flash them. Oh. Um, uh, like my butt, uh -huh. <laughs> and um, and then I just went there and I and I just like threw the script out and just set looked into the camera and said a bunch of like really dirty things. <laughs> then I flashed them and then I left and then I got it. <laughs> <laughs> to our first responders and teachers, thank you. Get the car insurance discount and service you deserve. Tap the banner to request to flash them, and then I left, and then I got it. <laughs> My ideal first date would be for someone to come and pick me up and then be like, you know, I don't feel like going anywhere. And then I'd be like, yeah, you're right, let's not go anywhere. And then they'd be like, you know what, I kind of just want to go home and watch a movie. And I'd be like, all right, we'll see you later. This was really fun. Did you give a speech? Did you have to give a speech for this uh, uh, when you got the award? Yes, I wasn't required to, but I did give one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Are you happy with how the speech went? I think so. Of what I can remember of it, I think I said thank you. Um, thank you to Young Hollywood for this award. Thank you to the Young Hollywood Awards and to all the young people out there. Keep being young. <laughs> Thank you to all the young people. Um, <laughs> you old people. And, um, <laughs> old people. <laughs> old people can go. <laughs> I'm gonna live forever. Old people. <laughs> old people can go <laughs> themselves. Why did you? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to live forever, and then I walked off. <laughs> yeah. So you took what's a big comedy risk there with that speech. How did it work out for you? Uh, just silence. There was a lot of young people there. A lot of young people? A lot of really young people there. Right, right. So I don't think their parents appreciated it. Oh, okay. Um, oh, great. Oh, also there were like children there. Oh, yeah. Totally. Oh, that's terrific. <laughs> well, but you know, I did it, you know, for the, for the televised, you know, I did it for myself. I don't know why I did it. I'm sorry. Next question. <laughs> Nope, they're all about that speech. Okay. <laughs> Didn't you, I, you know, I read an interview with you not too long ago where you said you looked forward to getting old. So here you are, you're making a joke about old people, but you, you say you, you want to get oh, old. Oh, yeah. I, I actually have a weird fascination with old people. When I was a kid, I um, really wanted to be an old woman. <laughs> because so you wanted to be an old yeah, woman? Yeah, because I feel, well, I felt and I still feel like old, old people can kind of do whatever they want. Like, they can get away with anything. And when I was a kid, um, I used to go to the mall. And uh, you know those uh, mall fountains? Mm -hmm. Like the pools in the middle of the mall? I always thought uh, that if I was an old person, like an old lady, I could jump in there and swim around. And um, <laughs> you know, and like, they wouldn't like arrest me because I could be like, I'm old. <laughs> as long as there is somebody writing for Larry Gear. Oh, I didn't know where your pause was gonna, I'm not supposed to be on the red carpet? No. Oh, I'm sorry. You're, you got fired. <laughs> They're telling me now? Yeah. You're telling me? Yeah, you're fired. This is an exclusive. I'm, I, we're, this is a horrifying moment. Oh my. Wow. Um, 
it's weird that she would tell me instead of like the producers. And I was like, I don't want to go down to the beach around everybody because I know I'm going to barf. And he was like, just do it in the ocean. <laughs> and I was like, what? I've never heard of that. And then I tried it, I swam out there, tried to get away from all the children. Yeah. And I threw up a bunch of times, <laughs> and then I just swam away. Um, Bethlehem doesn't rhyme with down, right? so he went with Allentown. Is that really true? That's or a you fact. Just... Wow, Factories tear down, down in Bethlehem. Town. I'm like tone deaf too, yeah. so I can't even sing it, but it's in my head. That's all right, we don't want to hear it. <laughs> Did you hire, like it's traditional, if the party's getting a little raunchy sometimes to hire a male stripper for the... For we the... didn't actually, um, but funny thing you asked, at 3.30 in the morning, someone, one of the bridesmaids drunkenly went on the street and just asked these two random guys to pretend to be strippers <laughs> and come to our house party. And because it was Dewey Beach, which is in Delaware, and anything goes there, I think pe these two guys were just like, yeah, oh. And, uh, <laughs> um, they were Don't like, worry, it's the least shocking thing you've said. <laughs> Today we'll be giving away awards for best feature, best first feature, and for the first time ever, best last feature, which many of you don't realize you've already made. That's right, no one is safe here. But I'll get someone to do it. I just have to have someone that knows how to fly. I'll take lessons, I would take it. <laughs> Okay. I'll learn how to fly. Okay. You know that you know you can always count on me. <laughs> All right. Jesus. <laughs> what was that look about? I just offered to save your life by flying and you did it. No, looked away. No, I love I felt terrible now. No, I marry me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who are you the closest with? Um, I mean it's I don't know. It's hard to choose. Amy, I guess. Because she's the biggest star. Pratt, Chris Pratt, he's my husband. You know, we all loved each other so much. <laughs> but it's over now, so uh, let's never talk about it again. Okay? Oh my God. I love her. I do too. She's weirder than I am. <laughs> that's unusual. And that's, that's rare. I'm crazy. <laughs> all right. Well, we I've never so been weird. to the South. What's it like down there? We pull out chairs, we open doors. Come on now. Uh, we say yes ma'am and no ma'am. No way. We do, from time to time. I have a very comfortable fold out couch if you ever want to come over. That sounds so, so there you go. It does sound... I'm in. Tell oh. us how old were you and what's happening here? Oh, wait, <laughs> so cute! Yeah. Yeah. Well, I yeah. just uh, finished law school. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I was going through a really bad divorce, and I was just... <laughs> well, here, we always end musically. Okay. So I've got guitars, um, drums, oh, hammer, really? or you can sing. Oh, God. You could do something from Judy Garland's last concert. Okay. Um, what was the Judy song that uh, meant the most to you? Oh, so many of them. I only want one. Um, Smile is a good one. Although, you know, she, it's not like she wrote that song, but her version of that I liked. Um, here, I'll, I'll sing that song for you. Here, maybe I can play, but... I bet. I don't know, actually. Whoops. I don't know, I'd have to, like, um... Hold on. No, I don't know. Oh! Come on. <laughs> no, tease like that. I don't know how to play. No. I taught myself on YouTube. It doesn't matter. Don't do this YouTube to me, Peter. Bad. No, I no. I just wanted to scream it. I just, it had to be. I knew it was possible. Well, I don't know how to <laughs> fucking do this. You can, though. I feel it now. I could do this all day. I have no idea what I'm doing. There was no Judy. I got nothing. I don't know how to do this song. I don't want to ruin it. You I don't have to ruin it. I only need a piece of it. 
see what happens with this. Oh. <laughs> I recently had a moment where I wore sunglasses with a mustache attached to them on the red carpet. I did it on a dare from Amy Poehler. Did I win anything? I didn't win anything, no. I lost a lot of things. Pride. I saw them taking a picture and there was just a... I, it was a game time decision that I made <laughs> because I could, I could tell that there was a sliver in between them and I could just quickly pop my head up in front of them. <laughs> and then that and then happened. I did it. Was Katy per um, Perio okay with this? She was not psyched about it. I told her, I was like, Katy, I uh, totally like photobombed your picture. And she was like, oh, why'd you do that? And I was like, I don't know. I just want you to like me. I just want you to like me. <laughs> Um, yeah. And then I told Hillary, and she was like, I'm running for president, don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Aubrey Plaza. Ooh, I want that treasure. Ah, that monster, let's kill it. Yeah, I did it. Wow. Go get that yeah. treasure. <laughs> ah, I bumped into the orc. <sighs> Try again. Ah, nice. It's the treasure. <laughs> How can I get it? Huh? Ah, let me get some water, yeah. lava. Oh, oh no! No, no, no! The treasure's gone! Download now and play for free! P-S-Y-C-H-O-L-O-G-Y it's more than learning to read and write. Put the K in front of it. Oh, okay. It's making a connection beyond words. Terry the, the pterodactyl. Pterodactyl. <laughs> Aubrey Plaza. Which Olympic gold medalist admitted to peeing in the pool? Um, Justin Bieber. Wrong. He's really thinking this text over. <laughs> <gasps> LOL. I don't believe you'll be able to come up with anything negative to say about Jerry. If you can. Well, I'm going to go for mine, Mom. In this game, you and I will be given a word followed by a blank. And if our answers match, you get the cash. The mind meld word is ice blank. Ice blank. Ice. 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 Blank. Ice. 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 Blank. Ice. 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 One, two, Q. The correct answer is iceberg. Probably. Well, I don't know. I feel like if it's not a physical thing, it's like a evil manifestation of spirits mm -hmm. that are yeah. karma, karmic yeah. related. I don't yeah. know. I also gave myself two hickeys on my arm. How did you, how did you do that? How did you do I you... sucked on my arm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, let me. <laughs> and I've been really hormonal lately, and I caught myself yesterday singing a song out loud that goes, kill, 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 <laughs> die, die, die. <laughs> <laughs> Bo Burnham is here. He wrote and directed a beautiful film, Eighth Grade. Which is even more impressive when you consider how easily he could have just ended up being a guy who explains jazz to you at a party. 
Elsie Fisher is also nominated. She's a, a sophomore in high school now. When I asked her about making eighth grade, she was like, oh my God, that was so long ago. Like, I don't even remember that, okay? Stop bringing it up, you're embarrassing me. And I said, I'm doing the best I can, Elsie. Can't we just have a nice dinner for once? I'm trying. Who wants to go first? She can. Hook me up, baby. Hook it up. Ready? Um, do you think going to an all-girls Catholic school messed you up in any way? Ooh, how long do we have? <laughs> Your Twitter handle is Evil Hag. Why Evil Hag? Because I like it. Um, I don't know, because why? <laughs> Sorry. Um. Why do I feel like you're my daughter and I... <laughs> And I'm like, we've got to talk about this report card. <laughs> Whatever. I like it. You um, listen, sit up straight, young lady, and tell me why you're evil hag. No, daddy, no. Um. So this one's the chocolate plague. Okay. Number nine. Careful around your eyes. Oh, was that a bad idea? Is someone playing the saxophone right now? Because I swear to God, I will. You better stop playing the saxophone, motherfucker. Nice to see you. How you been? Fine. Yeah? Yeah, how What you been you? doing with yourself? Ugh, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? No. No, you're just wandering through life, you're just floating like a jellyfish? Just trying to keep it together, not do anything too stupid. Really? Um, make good decisions and be positive. Who was stopping you, Aubrey Plaza? I don't know, myself, my brain. Oh, wow. Um, that guy up here? Yeah, that guy. Is it a guy, guy or a girl up there for you, by the way? Both. Oh. Um, and they're always fighting, and I always tell them, you guys have to not do that, and you have to just let me do my work. Um. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On behalf of Amy, I'd like to um, thank the devil and all the dark lords who Don't do the devil stuff. gave her this award Don't do the devil stuff. allowed her to feast Just on the flesh of the innocent. Thanks, everyone. We believe cannabis oil was the other holy oil of the Bible. Why? Our position is, if Jesus lived, he probably smoked weed. Yeah. <laughs> is Chen your type of dude as a, as a, as a half Latina? Is that well? That isn't he everyone's type of dude? Yes, he is, right? <laughs> but is that uh, what you're? But no, he's not my type. What what type of guy? You you, you strike me like a dude that. Where his arms don't fit in his shirt completely, like they're so thin. I don't know what that means. Like a guy that from Best Buy. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I go to Best Buy, I do really well there. <laughs> Best Buy, Kohl's. Kohl's. I clean up at Kohl's. But is that um, the type? Like, what is it? Like, if, if a guy's at Starbucks on an iPad. Do you look at him and go, wow, that's... I'm like, you, you better put a baby inside of me right now. <laughs> uh -huh. I say, uh, is there an app for you putting a baby inside of me? Because if there is, you should download it and then put a baby inside of me. All right, okay. I don't know. I've just been in a really weird uh, mental state lately. You've been in a weird mental state? Yeah, I keep finding these bites all over my body. Um, what? Like that one, and I don't know where they're coming from. So that I. That is, you actually do have a bite yeah, I do, right I, there. I spend most of my days wondering where these. Is that a shot? No, it's right there. It's right there. It's. The, I mean, that's look at that. That's a bite. That's a. Uh, don't stop doing that. <laughs> stop it. Uh, You're getting me all hot and bothered. Oh my goodness. Oh. Okay, so I'm putting that right up to bitestrokers.com. Yeah, I'll stroke my bite any day for you, Conan. <laughs> so, you just why and why may I ask is, is he dressed as Santa Claus? He's dressed as Santa Claus because well, first of all, he thought he wanted to go to Mexico and we surprised him and we told him to just pack bathing suits and flip-flops. 
uh, but we actually took him up north where it's very cold. <laughs> and, um, and then we, we packed him another suitcase with just a Santa costume in it. And that's all he had to wear all weekend. Oh, really? So we were, yeah, and he was wheeling me around and people were very afraid of our group. I would think they would be, yeah. They stayed away from us. <laughs> well, um... I found out something that you actually have show business relatives, that you yeah. came from a family with a long storied show business history. That's right. And I don't I don't know the names of these people right here. Are these them right there? Those are them. Okay. Oh, it's written on the back here. That's Chico and Dolores. And wh when is this and what are they doing? Okay, so those are my great grandparents. Um, and they were flamenco dancers. And they were like regionally famous. And what region? East Coast. <laughs> um. it's pretty, it's pretty big region. I think this cat is full of beans. You know what, I just remembered that when I was a kid, I, I competed in Irish dancing competitions, <laughs> river dance, which is something that... That Irish dancing where your legs go straight out... Yes. ...and your arms just stay at your side. Yes. <laughs> yes, which is like, which was a very, like, it was an existential moment I had where I realized, like, oh, that's probably why I'm so awkward and weird is because I was taught at a young age to have no expression and not move my That's arms. That's the thing. <laughs> Which... The Irish have the worst dance, and I'm gonna get complaints from about this now, but <laughs> being 100% Irish, I can say we have the worst dancing because well, our arms are straight by our side, our yeah. feet are shooting out in front of us, and our faces are just supposed to be like this the whole time. <laughs> well, we're bouncing up and down with no joy. I know, horrible. it was, I know. And I told her that, and she was like, oh my God, your entire life makes sense to me now. <laughs> and she couldn't believe it. And I was like, yeah, I forget that I was an Irish dancing co competitor, but right. you forget things. Smile, though your heart is breaking. Smile, even though it's breaking. I don't know what words. Although it's here, there are clouds in the sky. You get by if you smile through your fear and sorrow. Smile like there's no tomorrow. You'll see the sun come shining through. You're in for a hell of a ride. Monday. Right away, we get connected. This reunion's for the grown folks. Come on, y'all, let's get it! Family reunion, love and hip hop edition. New season premieres Monday at 8. Ow! Yeah. You dirty, dirty man. <laughs> Hey, what's going on everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we're joined by Aubrey Plaza. You know her from standout roles in films like Ingrid Goes West, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, shows like Parks and Recreation and many more. You can catch her in FX's Legion, which returns for its third season on July 1st, and she's very busy. She also stars in Child's Play, which is set to theaters this weekend. Aubrey Plaza, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. You once told BuzzFeed that your favorite pizza topping is hot and spicy peppers. Do you crank your wings too? I, what? <laughs> no, I said don't believe everything you read. Right. I've never talked to BuzzFeed a day in my life. I don't even know who that is. So this first one is the classic, and we'll start at the handle. At the handle? Mm-hmm. Of the wing? Of this whole thing. Oh, okay. Do you want me to watch me eat the whole thing, or? If you'd like to. Mm. Mm. 
So all showbiz origin stories are insane in their own right, but especially yours, going from a waitress working in Queens to all of a sudden landing Parks and Recreation, Funny People, and Scott Pilgrim vs. the World in the same exact week. Uh -huh. Did cycling through jobs in the restaurant industry do anything to help you prepare for a career in Hollywood, or is it just a way to pay the bills while you sought out auditions? Mm, it was kind of both. Like, every table was like a new performance, an opportunity for performance, you know? I didn't have to, like, be myself. I could be whoever I wanted to be and then try to get as much money as I could. It was like a game. Um, I like those kinds of games. Which pre-fame job do you remember more fondly? When you were a hostess at Joe's Crab Shack or when you were a cocktail waitress Who working in a that? bowling alley? Who are you? <laughs> I was a hostess, so I was in charge of announcing like the parties when they were ready, so I was on like the loudspeaker going like, Johnson, party of six, do the crab walk all the way to the host stand, your table's ready. Johnson, party of six. You um, still got it. Thank you. But every time there were certain songs that would come on that the entire wait staff would have to um, do like a song and dance to, like two slides to the left, four hops this time, That whatever that song is. Classic, that classic. Gives me nightmares now. Sauce Bay. So on the topic of the new movie, when you were growing up and working in the now defunct classic video store on Delaware Avenue, mm -hmm. did you have an interest or nostalgia in the child's play, Hellraiser, Freddy Krueger, Golden Age and horror? Not really, no. I didn't really have that interest. I wasn't really like a horror um, movie person ever. I'm mean, still not. Do you believe in ghosts, or have you had any sort of spooky paranormal encounter? I know that you grew up next to a cemetery. I thought you were going to say 7-Eleven, <laughs> um, which is also true. Um, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I spent a lot of time in that parking lot. Um, uh, yeah, I believe in ghosts. My cat uh, was hit by a car, and then a couple weeks later, crawled right out of the cemetery, right back onto our back deck. And, um, you know, when that happens, you just have to let, it, let her inside and go like, cool. I wonder if this is like your seventh life or... Your ninth one? Wanda's hot pepper sauce. They'd be really like not satisfying if I had just no reaction to any of these wings, right? But it would also be pretty amazing. Oh. I know that you do have an amazing happen, poker though? face. Well, I don't think anybody has ever sought out for that specific goal, but maybe you could be the first one. I'm not one. Just trying to do anything here. I'm just eating, <laughs> I'm just eating whatever you tell me to. I just do whatever you tell me. Okay. Try to keep a straight face as long as you can. Okay. Okay. So the fans would give us a red card and kick us off the internet if we didn't take a wing to discuss April Luggate, your iconic character from Parks and Recreation. Okay. What do you think was the greatest on-set prank of all time, whether it was one of yours or someone else's? I don't know if you would call it a prank, but Nick Offerman and Chris Pratt would like fart a lot. The classic fart prank. It's just like, I don't, sometimes farts are funny. I don't know, I guess they are. I just don't think they're that funny. And neither does Amy. And without fail, like anytime the two of them were in a scene together, they would like Fart City. rip one. Disgusting. Right. And it would make us so angry. Um, and I would say like the best prank that I ever did was I bought a toilet goblin online and um, I put it in Adam Scott's toilet in his trailer. And if you don't know what a toilet goblin is, it's like a little like creature that its arms have like suction cups. So you like put it in the toilet and you suction cup its arms to the lid so that when you open the lid, it like jumps out at you. It's terrifying. And then in her book, Yes Please, Amy Poehler said that Chris Pratt had the greatest audition that she's ever witnessed. Have you ever had a chance to see the tape? I feel like they show, maybe showed that at the reunion, but I think I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I don't remember, <laughs> but I'm sure it was good. And then there's so many coveted pieces of Parks and Rec memorabilia, whether it's Leslie's Pawnee Goddess hoodie or the baseball bats that Nick Offerman had made for the whole cast. Do you have a most treasured tchotchke from your time on set? Yes, I have. Well, I stole um, Janet Snakehole's like cigarette holder. Um, so I have that. I keep that in my backpack at all times in case I need it. Oh, I have Andy Dwyer's um, aviators, and um, I don't take care of them at all. They're just like flung in a drawer in my kitchen. I could probably sell those someday if things don't go well for me, which they won't. <laughs> Number four already. And straight face all the way through. So as we touched on a little bit today, you went I do from... feel like it's all in my teeth though. That's disgusting. I'll tell you. Am I I'll allowed tell to you. drink? Sure. You have milk, we have water. 
You got a coffee cup full of something? I'm just gonna have some coffee. Mm -hmm. I like black coffee with my spices. It's, uh, it's one of the great mixes. God, it burns so good. <laughs> So as we touched on a little bit today, you went from relative obscurity to almost overnight starring alongside some of the biggest names in entertainment, but was anything more intimidating than following Adam Sandler, your fourth ever time doing stand-up? No, that was the one of the most fucked up nights of my life <laughs> um, because Judd Apatow totally duped me. He invited me to the Comedy and Magic Club in Hermosa Beach and was like, just come with the cast with Jonah and Adam and like, you can watch them. We'll just kind of get into it. And then backstage, he came up to me and he was like, you're going on next. You're following Sandler. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And, uh, and then Adam came up to me and was like, you're going to die out there. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. He went, you're going to die. <laughs> And he hadn't done stand-up in like years at that point. So the audience gave him a standing ovation when they just announced his name. He hadn't even said anything yet. And I was sitting behind the curtain going, this is not gonna go well for me. How'd it go for you? You know what, it went great. See? I think when you have nothing to lose, mm -hmm. it actually works in your favor because I didn't have any credits at that time. So when they announced me, they just said like, and now we have Aubrey Plaza. Uh, from Wilmington, Delaware. <laughs> and that was like my announcement. Los Calientes. The halfway mark here. Okay. I have a little bit of stuff coming out of my nose. Does that make you feel good? It does. You get pleasure out of this, right? Yeah, yeah, it's all I have. Mm. Can I pick it on my teeth? I'm, I'm, I'm similarly empty inside, you know, I need this. You just want, you want, you want someone else to feel something. <laughs> exactly. So you can feel. Exactly. Uh, we have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive on our guest's Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. So I'll oh, bust God. out the laptop, I'll show you the picture. You just From my me. Instagram? Yep. All right. <laughs> you just told me the bigger story. Does that sound good? Which one? Which account is it? My public, my public one? Well, I can't get into your private one. Good. Sarah, you said you were buying a car today. Dad. I stayed up and crunched all the numbers. I already used Capital One Auto Navigator. I found my car online and got pre-qualified instantly. Easy. Well, since we're both up, who wants French toast? What's in your wallet? All right, here you are hugging the Jeff Goldblum Jurassic Park statue. Where is security? Did you get tasered or what's going on here? Well, if you if you look at the picture closely, you see that woman in the yellow shirt is um, in mid uh, run. Action. Mid action to come and um, uh, escort me off the premises. <laughs> His chest is exposed and the light was just hitting it a certain way. I just felt like I needed to touch it. You're only in London in standing in front of a giant Jeff Goldblum statue once in your life. Right. Um, so I just felt like it's now or never, baby. I had to seize that opportunity. Got to get into that as close to the nipple as possible. Do you have a lasting memory from your summer with Zac Efron? I guess like when I think about that shoot, all I remember is just like, I have these like images of Zac with like a TRX um, like rig on like a palm tree, just like pumping, pump. just pumping iron in between takes. And I just remember like standing like off to the side going like, that's a movie star right there. That's the shit. <laughs> I'll never be that, but I'll be close to it, as close as I can. Do you have a crowning athletic achievement from your time with the Pistol Shrimps? How long do we have? I'm I mean, here, I'm here. I, man, I went through a lot on that team. Is it an achievement to tear your ACL on the court? Because that happened to me. That means that you're pushing it to the limit. I pushed you know? it to the limit. And not only did I tear my ACL, but I was in full disguise. I was wearing a wig and goggles and playing under a different name because legally I was not allowed to play on that team at the time. So I was in disguise and the joke ended up being on me because I ripped my ACL in half and had to go to a, a hospital. One more for you. Grumpy Cat. How could you bring Grumpy Cat up right now at a time like this? Because it's important that we don't forget Grumpy Cat. Yeah, we can't, because Grumpy Cat died. Mm -hmm. A week ago. I'm still grieving. And you know what's messed up about that is I had written a movie for Grumpy Cat and I to star in. And um, now what am I going to do without the cat? All right, well, I'm sorry. R.I.P. I'm sorry I brought it up. Hellfire. Sounds cute. Hmm. Taste no evil. That's hot. Okay, you got me. You were waiting for that, right? Yeah. Okay, there it is. Mm -hmm. Got it. 
So some of the best talk show guests are the ones that you can almost see in real time, navigating the artifice of it all and then Sorry, what was the question? How has your relationship with the interview talk show format evolved over the years? You know, I just do the best I can. I tell myself before every interview, be normal, Aubrey. Just be likable. Get in there, show them what you got, and get out. And um, somehow it just always goes south. I don't know why. Maybe it's the lights. <laughs> or uh, just some kind of like deep-seated psychological um, trauma. Are these organic? Grass-fed? Mm -hmm. Pasture-raised? All that. Mm. That's good. Do you know what farm they came from? Uh, well, sure. I'll find out later. The chili farm. Uh-huh. <clears throat> you ain't gonna take me down, little chickies. I eat all of you. Is it true that sometimes, like, spices can make you hallucinate? Yeah, it's they can be trippy. Sweet. Why, are you starting to feel something? No, I just see some weird shit. <laughs> I might not be because of this. So whether it's the media or fans, sometimes, like, if you're in Hollywood and you have a reputation for being a jerk, maybe people tiptoe around you. Or if you have a reputation for being an overshare, maybe people step over those boundaries the second that they meet you. What are the professional and personal liabilities of being somebody who's labeled sarcastic or awkward because of some of your most popular characters? People, Can you use this, words that are easy? Because I have this talk show where I interview Oh god, people. that coffee's not helping. <laughs> it's an interesting Oh mix god, that made it worse. <laughs> Would it? We're coming in with an emergency. Sometimes you can just oh, point thanks. and get a new and get oh, a new Oh, because I like this one. You know, like sometimes because I have this show where I interview celebrities while eating increasingly spicy chicken wings, people will just come up to me and be like, hey Sean, this new hot sauce, it's called Satan's Blood. It's the hottest hot sauce ever. You have to try it out, you know? Because like, when, and I understand. And you're like, I just want to do a daytime show. Right. Can't I, I, but I just I, talk about the Kardashians for once? Exactly, but I understand why people think that, but then it is kind of missing the point. Ugh, God, I don't know, Sean. I just, <laughs> the thing is, <laughs> like, I just feel like um, nobody gives me a chance, you know? <laughs> People think that I uh, that I don't care, or um, that I can just that I can only be sarcastic, or only play like you know a deadpan character or something. Um, but it's just not true. I play young mom in child's play. Um, you can see my maternal instincts on the big screen on June 21st. In theaters near you. And um, if you really go through my. Um, Filmography, you'll see, you know, many different characters with all different kinds of flavors. Um, Los Calientes, I would say that would be like a the Dirty Grandpa version of me. Shaquandas would be like the Mike and Dave character. Hellfire. What would the uh, Wilshire Chili Farm that we just ate be? I'd go with Ingrid Goes West for that one, mm -hmm. just because there's like a Los Angeles theme there. Have you ever had anyone name their movies based on the hot sauces? No, but that would be amazing. It's a fun game. You're in for a hell of a ride. Monday. Right away, we get connected. This reunion's for the grown folks. Come on, y'all, let's get it! Family reunion, love and hip hop edition. New season premieres Monday at 8. All right, we're back. Okay. That was a big one. Well, if you think that was a big one. Do I look cool? You look awesome. Sweet. <laughs> Does everyone always make it to the end? Sometimes. I've never seen this. I've only know about it from my inbox. Right. From the emails I get asking me to go on. Which you've been able to swerve effectively. I've for avoided so it long. until now, but <laughs> you trapped me this time. Right. So we've been doing this forever and ever and ever. I just don't know if Child's Play will be my last movie, so I figured get it in while I can. Oh, we really appreciate that. But we've been doing this for so long, but shockingly, like fewer than 15 people have ever tapped out. Sorry, what? Whoa. I just want to get a preview first. God, that went straight into my lower intestine. Okay. It's like anywhere where I turn, it's bad. There's no hiding. Uh-uh. That burns just being near it. Ow! Yeah. 
You dirty, dirty man. <laughs> you little trickster. Mm -hmm. I see what you're doing with that one. But I'm not afraid. Salute. I know. Aubrey Plaza going in. You know I'm Puerto Rican, right? I know. If I if I wasn't on camera, I'd eat these down to the bone with my fingers. Nothing stopping That's what you. you and my family. Nothing stopping you. That's right, baby. <laughs> Just get a little skin there. So it's not every day that we have the most famous person from Delaware sitting across the seat from us, and that is an Joe? official. That is an official distinction. Are oh, they talking about Biden? Last year, you topped a Delaware online poll, edging out the likes of oh Ryan my Philippine, God. Hold on. Valerie Bertinelli and Joe Biden. Yeah, and the guy that created the Heimlich remover. What was his name Walter? I think Walter. You even topped out Walter. Walter Heimlich? Have you ever been punkin chunkin? <laughs> no, I haven't. And I can't, and I'm <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> and fuck you and fuck you all. <laughs> Sucks. Where do you fall on the debate that North Delaware and South Delaware should be separated into two different mm. states? Yes. What is Scrapple? Ow. I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay, now I have me now. What is Scrapple? Meat. Have you ever had it? Is it good? Yeah, I had it all the time. Fuck. How is the horse racing scene in Delaware? How does it compare to, say, like, mm -hmm. England's the Royal Ascot? I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> I don't care anymore. Are you talking about point to point? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fucked up. And then Delaware seems to be a place with a fair number of ice cream bucket list destinations, whether it's Woodside Farm Creamery or that 20 scoop ice cream challenge at the charcoal pit. Which one sounds best right now? Um, a charcoal pit. Mm -hmm. I like charcoal pit. I like my mommy. <laughs> Am I handling it? You are. Hmm. That's good. With bravery. Is something coming out of my nose. With composure. Nope. You're good. Am I good? Am I having a stroke? <laughs> I don't think so. You're good. Can I pour this into my nose somehow? You can give it a shot. God, oh, that felt good. Did that help? Yeah, she's gonna do that one more time. Oh yeah, that was good. Oh yeah. Oh, That's yeah. the move. Anything I can get up my nose. <laughs>on February 25th, 2010. Oh my God. You tweeted that you hadn't used a microwave in two years. Okay. Have you started using a microwave again? Hell yeah, I microwaved shit last night. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of the microwave. You're back on the microwave. I exploded a cup of coffee in a microwave last night. My eyes are on fire. What are some telltale signs that you're walking into an awesome Puerto Rican restaurant? Uh, you know, if the mofongo's on point. Um, if, uh, oh God, if the music's good, it's all about the music. My eyes are burning. Do you think I can put the milk in my eyes? Is that a bad idea? You I know, put it in my nose. Should I put it in every like hole? I think, we've gone, I think we've gone this far. Might as well give it a shot. I just don't know how I could do it without like ruining my, ruining my reputation. Can't 
Can't see anymore. Ow. This is the last dab. We call it the last dab because it's tradition around here to put a little extra on the last wing. Ow. You don't have to if you don't want to. I know you're going through it. Ow. Well, how did this get in my eye? Can I have a new napkin? Yeah, napkin duty, napkin duty. Is this duty. psychological? I think it is on some level. Okay. But it's also physical, you Take know. Take me to my happy place. We are eating some of the hottest scorching hot chicken wings in the history of existence. No, no, the happy place. Um, Grumpy Cat. And? Improv. And? Um, Two words. Aviator sunglasses. All right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're dabbing? We're dabbing it up. Very deliberate. Very cautious. Eh. Is that enough for you? That's that's plenty. That's plenty. Good job, Aubrey. I just want to make you happy. Well, you have, you know. <laughs> I feel whole now. You do. Mm -hmm. <sighs> no. Mm -hmm. No. No. All right, Aubrey Plaza, here we are at the finish line, the end, and just one more obstacle to go. You have one of the great poker faces in Hollywood, but I've heard you say that sometimes, in order not to break, you'll go into actual physical pain, pinching yourself until you bleed. Yeah, that's so true. Where here, did you that? That so pain. here. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you a series of pictures, and all you have to do is not break, okay? There's a new breed of explorers taking me to discover a hidden world beyond our senses. It's a different planet down there. Welcome to Earth. All episodes now streaming only on Disney Plus. And all you have to do is not break, okay? Excuse me. I knew we were gonna end this on an awkward note. <laughs> it's my classic, um, it's my classic signature. Well, look at you though, 10 chicken wings up, 10 chicken wings down. We ran into a wall here in the back half, but you rallied through. I did. Went to your happy place, got a new napkin and handled it. Thank you so much. Now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you, my friend. Okay. This camera, this camera, this camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. Okay, um, well, I've been doing a lot of self-care recently. I've been going to a lot of therapy and I'm just trying to keep my eye on the prize and uh, not do anything stupid. Is that what you meant? Yeah, maybe if you have a movie coming out. This oh, weekend. Child's Play in theaters on June 21st. <laughs> Good job, good job. The milk up the nose really helped though. It actually did. Didn't it? It kind of cleared, it kind of shook me clean like an etch a sketch, you know? Did, has anyone ever done that before? No, you're the first person to ever. Do you uh, promise? I promise. <laughs> Got scary there for a minute. Aloha, Spice Lords. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. This is Sean Evans checking in with three tips for surviving summer. Remember to wear sunscreen at least an SPF 50 if you're anything like me. Don't forget to stay hydrated when you're out there on the beach and always have a bottle of the sauce of summer. Los Calientes, I never go anywhere without it. Heatness.com, heatness.com to order Los Calientes. It's muy delicioso. So are these the same ones YG was eating? Yeah. Slightly different on the sauces, but. All right, YG, I respect you too, fool. Hey, what's going on everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we're joined by Schoolboy Q. The greatest. <laughs> 
He's a five-time Grammy-nominated platinum-selling artist. Every album he drops is a marquee event in hip-hop, and his most recent release, Crash Talk, is no different. Schoolboy Q, welcome to the show. What up, bro? What up? How are you with spicy food? Do you crank Man, it? I love spicy food. I, I prefer spicy food all the time, but you know, when they prep me before this, they made it seem like this was like a normal spicy, so I'm a little nervous right now. In your head a little bit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you feel? Mm. Mustard. Mm. So back in 2016, you famously trolled fans by releasing a version of the Blank Face album art with the yeah. Crying Jordan meme on it. Yeah. And then even your most recent video for Num Num Juice, it has these deep cut internet references like mm. Elon Musk hitting the joint on the yeah. Joe Rogan podcast. I use the internet for funny things. Like a lot of people grieve on the internet. A lot of people like, uh, you know, look for sad things and try to do motivational things on the internet. And I'm just not really here for that. Like I deal with all that in real life. So for the most part, I'm just looking for funny stuff, dude. If it's not funny, I'm just scrolling right by it. And then what about when you drop a project? Like, do you care what people are saying about it online or do you block out the Twitter chat? I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't check comments because it's always bad. You, you get good, you get good comments, obviously. Yeah, you get a, a more good than bad, but you, for some reason you only focus on the bad ones. Those are the ones you remember. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I'm not here for the slander and all that. I'm cool on that. Sauce Bay. Mm hmm Yeah. <laughs> you like that one? Yeah. That sound like me. <laughs> it's straight. This shit ain't even hot. So as I understand it, you've been working on your golf game almost daily, falling in love with the sport on accident, taking a bet from a friend.